We could have already solved cancer. And up front, that's a bold claim to make. After all, scientists are cracking at it day and night to finally come to a conclusion. But before we can get to curing cancer, let's take a step back. How about a lot of steps back? Back to the basis of knowledge in our society. School. Now here's what I want you to do. Think of all the times that you went home from school. And when you were asked, so what did you learn at school today? You came up empty handed. This wasn't just sheer coincidence. It's because our modern education system isn't built to teach. It's built to create precision and consistency, industrial age values. But today's students need to learn to ask questions, think critically and experiment to get down to the answer of things. I learned that through experience. Normally, Waking up at 5 in the morning every other day of summer is not something that a high schooler typically chooses to do. However, that's exactly what I ended up doing the summer after my sophomore year to take the BART to San Francisco General Hospital, where, in coordination with the clinical lab, I conducted my first ever scientific research project, investigating the interaction between alcohol and heroin on a biomolecular level. However, the whole time, I couldn't help but think about how different it was from the science that I learned in school. There were no worksheets, no given right or wrong, and no experiment kits to start off with. Only me, my thoughts, and my questions. This is real scientific research, and it's what the cancer researchers I mentioned earlier are doing in the field today. Seems like a pretty key skill that should be taught to students, right? But take a look at this. This is a survey of high school students that I conducted at my high school in reference to the age at which they first had a chance to conduct real scientific research through, for example, an internship. The average age, between 15 and 16 years old. Now listen to this statistic. As published by Congress in 2016, there were 6.9 million scientists and engineers in the United States, accounting for 4.9% of total U.S. employment. So that's 4.9% of the population, accounting for almost everything you see around you. If it wasn't made by nature, it was designed by an engineer or a scientist. Students are taught the principles of scientific research far too late in life, at a point where they've already surpassed a lot of their critical learning age. However, I wanted to see if it was possible to create a curriculum that promoted question-oriented thinking and created an environment where students could learn to ask meaningful questions. It's not hard to say by any means that our public education system is flawed, but what's a lot harder is creating a better one. So I got to work pioneering a system of my own. First, like in any scientific experiment, I developed a hypothesis. My hypothesis was that students could learn better when instead of being tested, they were asked to answer their own questions. To test this hypothesis, I founded an organization with the goal of increasing accessibility to scientific research and engineering education to youth. Our first test was at Warm Springs Elementary School in Fremont, California, where we worked with the school to develop an after-school program, where we divided the students up by grade and then taught various topics that were up and coming in their fields, such as energy sciences or immunology or earth sciences. We specifically focused in on areas that were in the cutting edge of each of their respective industries. For example, in earth science, focusing on radioactive materials in space and in energy sciences, focusing on the race to develop a more efficient solar panel or in immunology, discussing the human race versus rapidly evolving diseases, which coincidentally happened at a time prior to the pandemic. Our goal was to have the students develop their own questions, questions that really inspired and motivated them. We then, in the next phase of teaching, discussed the fundamentals of scientific research and engineering, explaining concepts such as the scientific method, how to read and write papers, and how to create research proposals. After all this was done, we had the students create questions of their own, 
students as young as 10. And these weren't any typical science fair questions, such as what color will a tooth turn if I keep it in soda for a week. These were questions like how do pleasant scents during sleep affect dreams, or what materials are needed for life to form. Questions that not even scientists today have the answers to. Then, it came time for the students to develop research proposals for experiments that they believe could help answer their questions. And I was fascinated by the insight they had into each of their individual topics. The proposals they made took into account everything from control groups to external factors to research questions. And they had all done their own independent research, not dictated by myself or anyone else. In fact, we'd even asked them not to be bound by money or time in their proposals to allow for maximum creativity. This is what I now believe is the trick to education. If you can get someone to ask a question that really sparks their curiosity and then not give them the answer, they will figure out their answer themselves. We can observe this in something as simple as not telling a toddler where their candy is hidden. Rest assured, given time, they'll find it. And it's not just me who can help make a change to education. So can the rest of you. I would encourage other high schoolers, parents, and students alike to take up questions as a form of teaching. Use scientific research and question-oriented thinking as a form of teaching students. You'll end up equipping them with the toolkit they need to succeed in life. The ability to ask questions and be creative. And create your own experiments. Ask questions that I might not have. And together, we can create a better form of education. But now, let's think about what my experiment means in terms of our contemporary school system. We saw elementary school students coming up with research proposals for experiments that PhD students are carrying out today. Granted, the proposals would have needed many edits to become viable experiments, but it just goes to show how our education system could be a lot more effective. Now these students, with their questions and their experiments, they did not all conduct the same research. For example, within neuroscience, some studied psychology, some studied the neurons, and some studied the effects of gene editing on the brain. They all went in different directions with their research, something our modern education system misses out on. In the classroom, all the students learn the same thing. They aren't made out to be specialists or follow their own interests and passions. But can you find two innovators who took the same path to innovation in life, who had the same passions, same education, same job, same ideas? No, right? Then why do we enforce this precision onto our students? Let's learn to ask some questions about it. Thank you.